Hello, this is Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com for what they are asking. And today's question of the week is what are some good standby topics that you can uh, pull out of your back pocket when you need to fill the lull in a conversation? So, as somebody who was a fat, awkward seventh grader who thought that a really great pickup line was, Would you like to play Connect Four? Um, I'm going to recommend that you don't invite people to play board games, always. There is always a time for board games. Um, but when you need to fill a lull in the conversation, uh, my biggest bit of advice is going to be to go to exactly what it is that you're thinking about that you don't want to say or that you're nervous to say or that you're stuck on and share that with the person as a means of filling the lull in a conversation and then ask them what are you wanting to say that you haven't said yet? Um, this sounds totally dorky and kind of geeky, but I'm a sex geek. Um, the reason it's really useful and powerful is it's usually what you're not saying that's caught in your head that's keeping you know the connection from happening or the flow of the conversation or the date or the hanging out time. When you cop to it and get it out of your head, it has a lot less power over you and you're role modeling for the other person that it's okay for them to share what's keeping them or it's got them stuck in the conversation. What's creating the lull in the first place. When you role model for them that it's okay for them to share and they share, they get it out of their, their head and they're less stuck and then the flow kind of starts to be created or is, is open to show up again in the conversation. The other reason that sharing um, what's going on in your head is really useful is you don't often have to struggle to figure out what it is you need to say next. It's usually right there because it's really loud in your head. You just don't want to say it. So I like to use that kind of transparency. One, because it's easy for me to figure out what it is I'm not saying. Two, it actually you know creates the other person an opportunity for them to get unstuck. And then three, by me sharing what's actually going on, what's real for me in the moment, um, I'm creating a basically an experience of transparency and vulnerability which goes a long way to creating trust with the people that you're hanging out with because they start to count on you to share what it is that you're, you're not saying and most of us are, are experiencing in the rest of our life all these weird wonky instances of people not telling the truth or not sharing what's going on or not even admitting that something's awkward like we're all faking it so when you start to be the person who's not faking it, you're actually creating a situation that's unique, may even be more awkward for a little bit, but for the people that that really vibes with, what you're creating is an experience of, of transparency and, and it means that you're trustworthy. Um, it sounds kind of risky, and in many ways it is, but it really can kind of transform your life. If you're actually stuck for a conversation topic and you want to fill the lull, my, my geeky relationship dork advice is to ask them something that you really want to know about them that's interesting. Not, you know, how's the weather or, you know, any kind of small talk uh, subject matter, but really like, you know, what's your favorite book that changed your life? Um, you know, for me, it's the questions I love to ask are like, what are three books that I could read if I wanted to get to know you better? Like, what, would, what are the books you would recommend for me to get a sense of who you are? That's a really fun question to ask. Um, and again, it, it, you're role modeling that it's okay for them to ask you deep questions, too. Because most people hate small talk. It doesn't really lead anywhere, and you don't get to know anybody. So be that fun person who gets to come up with, you know, interesting questions. If, you, if you're a sex geek like I am, then, then what I would recommend is the asking really interesting questions about sex. I mean, if you guys are on a date, um, or if you're dating, I mean, don't ask a random stranger. I do sometimes, but I don't recommend it right off the bat. Um, but ask them, you know, what kind of sex do you like? Um, you know, ask them safer sex questions. Have your, your safer sex elevator speech, if you want to do that, and that's something you can find on uh, the Read About Sex website. Um, you know, asking interesting questions that may seem risky um, can also be really fulfilling in that you're, you're way more interesting, as long as you're not being a creep. 
um, you're way more interesting when you're asking people real questions. So things like, you know, relationship stuff, you know, what kind of relationships do you like? How do you like to date? Um, sexuality stuff, like what kind of sex do you like? Um, you know, all the way to pop culture. What kind of movies do you like? What are your favorite three movies? Uh, if I wanted to get to know who you are as a human being. Um, books, things like that, to really get a sense, uh, to open up, so that, that the people that you're talking to, you're inviting them to share back. And in creating those vulnerable moments where you're being transparent and opening up the modes of connection, you're very often going to create a situation where lulls don't happen. And then last but not least, Sometimes it's good to be quiet. You don't have to be chatty Cathy all the time. Um, so sometimes while it feels really nerve-wracking and vulnerable even more to be silent with somebody that you like, um, also practice being silent. And you can be transparent there too and be like, wow, this is kind of awkward to be quiet with you, but I'm liking it. So let us know um, what you think. Leave some comments on the videos. Uh, please check out, you know, what they are asking and, and, you know, leave us questions and, and check out all the videos and please tell your friends. And once again, I'm Reed Mahalko from readaboutsex.com for What Are They Asking? Bye!